president of the Alumni Association, I want to welcome and congratulate each and every one of you, both parents and students, and thank you for attending this informal gathering. I know that some of you haven't even checked into your dorms yet, but your presence here means a great deal to us. I address myself now to the scholarship winners. You have not only been accepted as freshmen to a university rich in tradition, but you are doubly honored in that your academic records have entitled you to the coveted Roger T. Moorhead Memorial Scholarship. And so I speak directly to each and every one of you. This is your freshman year at Brighton University. What will you make of it? read them all. Oh, come on, Camille. That's impossible. It would take a 1,200 word a minute speed reader, eight reading hours a day, and over 286 years to finish a million average size books. Sorry I mentioned it. Just think. He lives there. Sounds like it should be organ music. It should. He's talking about his astronomy professor. Hi, little bud. That's all I ever hear lately. Professor Jason Mills. You think he created the universe? <laughs> Not quite, but he knows more about it than anyone else. He's brilliant. He knows everything. You think he can find your dorm? I'm lost. Let's not drive around in circles like you usually do. Pull over and ask. What's the matter, kid? You lost? No, I'm looking for Hollis Dormitory. Hollis, sure. Just go straight, take your first left. Thanks. If you're visiting somebody, just check in at the desk in the lobby. Oh, I'm not visiting. I'm going to be living there. Really? Yeah, I'm a freshman. You're a freshman? I'm here on a football scholarship. Linebacker. <laughs> But you're only 13. I know. But look at it this way. If I leave home now, think of all the heartache I'll save you later. Good thinking, son. Right, man. <laughs> Come on, let me get the way. Girls and boys living in the same building? Ah, we've been through this before. All the dorms in Brighton are co ed. Boys and girls on the first floor, yeah. girls and boys on the second floor. I got the picture. What's this world coming to? The next thing you know, they have co-ed showers. Too bad I missed all the fun. Walter. Ma, your anxieties about sexual relationships are so outdated. You're too young to be thinking about the opposite sex. It's the only other sex there is. You just stay in your own room, do you hear? Now, Ma, how am I supposed to get out of the building, sir? You're the genius. You figure it out. Let's go. 
go down to Mom, I had asked you not to call me a genius. Huh? Watch the tone of voice with your mother now. She burped you. She can call you anything she wants. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, there's room 225. Right on the corner. Right. Can I help you? Yeah. Are you Steve Binsfield? That's right. I'm Nick Newell. Your Nick Newell. That's me, Nick Newell. I see. Nick Newell. You mind if we come in? Oh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Sure, please, come on in. Come right on in, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, you're Nick Newell. I guess you're expecting someone taller. Well, maybe a little better. Steve. Steve Benfield. I know. Nice to meet you, Rumi. These are my folks. How you doing? Hey. Hello, how are you? And this is my sister, Camille. Hey, Camille. Listen, I think I should warn you. It isn't easy living with super brains. Knock it off, Camille. Hush, Camille. I guess you must have skipped a few grades, huh? He skipped high school. His IQ is over 200. What's yours? I don't know. I think I've flunked IQ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm here on athletic scholarship. You still had to have good grades to get into Brighton? Yeah, sure, but it was a struggle all the way, you know. How'd you do it? Uh, my son scored so high on his college entrance exam that he got in here without a high school diploma. <laughs> you are a real genius. Actually, they call it severely gifted, but it's no big deal. My teacher said that when God was issuing parts, I got in the brain line twice. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble is, by the time I got over the bodies, they were really running short. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, son. <laughs> Come on, Nick. I'll help you unpack. All right. Uh, the bedroom's right in here. Uh, Let me get this for you. Oh, dear. You better move that bed away from the window so you won't get caught in the draft. Ma, quit babying me. Nick, now you listen to me. These kids are a whole lot older than you are. A lot older. I mean, 18, 19 is different from 13. Maybe so, but my brain's not 13. No, but everything else is. I don't want you to get hurt. Lots of times, kids their age don't want someone younger hanging around. Maybe not at first, but once they get to know me, I bet they will. I hope so. Nick, you are so special. And we're so very proud of you. Thanks, Ma. And I won't let you down. I'll do great in college, just like I've always done in school. Now, you listen to me. If anything goes wrong, if you just feel like you want to come home, you get on the phone and call me. Right, Ma. Give me a while. This is our special bed. You keep it there in case you need to call me. Okay, but I really won't be needing it. Just hang on to it for me. Soon we'll see each other again. I'll be home for Christmas vacation. Hey, take care of yourself, son. Right on, dear. Nick, I'm really gonna miss you. Be a good boy. I will. And remember what I said. Nice to meet you all. Good luck. You got a real nice family. Yep. I really do. So, here we are. The odd couple. Only I'm a little odder than you. 
Hope you don't mind the generation gap. No problem. Everything's going to work out just fine. Listen, I know what goes on with Jock, so maybe we better work out a system. System? Yeah, you know, like when you have dates, long dates. I'm talking action. Oh, you mean... Right. This is a co-ed dorm, isn't it? I wasn't born yesterday, although I looked like I was. What kind of system do you have in mind? Well, say you're entertaining and you didn't want me to come in. So all you have to do is tie something to the doorknob. This red handkerchief. Tie that to the doorknob, and if I see it, I'll get lost. See, I kind of understand about those things, Steve. Right, right. I'm going to finish unpacking. I'll be right back. Yeah, come in. Hi, I'm Travis Salt. This is my friend, Jeff Langford, and uh, you must be Steve Bensfield. That's right. Well, Steve, I'm president of Delta Lambda Chi, and we just want to welcome you to Brighton. Delta Lambda Chi? That's a good fraternity. The best. We have most of the jocks, some Phi Beta Kappas, a bunch of real good guys. You're a track star, aren't you, Steve? Well, I might have been a star in high school. I don't know about here. I do some pole vault, high jump, stuff like that. What about your roommate, Nick Newell? We hear he's a real brain. He is a certified genius. We'd like both of you to drop in a little rushing party we're giving this Friday night. Uh, you know, stop by, meet some of the guys, have a few brews, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, I'd like that. Is your roommate around? Hi, guys. Who are you? I'm Nick Newell. Say what? You're Nick Newell? Yeah, well, it's like I said, he may be only 13, but he's smarter than all of us. Hey, guys, what was that I heard about a big blast on Friday? Yeah, uh, but it's not definite. Uh, we're still on probation from our last beer bust. Isn't that right, Langford? Oh, right. The campus police consider our house a war zone. All right. But uh, we'll let you know. Uh, so stay in touch, Bensfield. <laughs> Oh, well, who wanted to be in a fraternity anyway? How many astronomy classes are you going to take? They'll only let me take one my first semester. At least it's with Professor Mills. Oh, yeah, he's that guy you say is so terrific. Oh, yes, I can't wait to meet him in person. I've seen a lot of pictures of him. My favorite is in the centerfold of the Astronomy Quarterly. Maybe you've seen it on my wall. Now, that's what I call gorgeous. Well, he is terribly handsome. No, not him, her. Which one? The one that's over there smiling at us. I'll be right back. Hey, how you doing? I think we're in the same dorm. My name's Steve Bensfield. Hi, I'm Dinah St. Clair, and this is my roomie, Julie Gordon. Hi. Aren't you on the track team? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I'm Julie Gordon. Uh, I'm Nick Newell. I noticed you around the dorm, and I really wanted to talk to you. Really? If I had known that, I would have made it easy for you. How do you like Brighton so far? It's terrific. I can't wait for the classes to start. You must really be smart to be here so young. Thirteen's not that young. I read about a kid who graduated when he was 12. Now he's in med school. How would you like to have a doctor whose voice hasn't changed yet? <laughs> what are you majoring in? Astronomy. Uh, how about you? Journalism. Oh, you want to be a writer? Yeah. I just made a reporter on the school newspaper, and I'd sure love to do a story on you. <laughs> Forget it. I'm trying to keep a low profile. I know. My profile can't get much lower. I seem to have already attracted enough attention. Uh, publicity is the last thing I really need. I understand. <clears throat> is that why you wanted to talk to me? To see if you could get a story on me? Oh, no. I wanted to talk to you because I think you're an interesting person. I just love intelligent men. Really? That's me. It must be hard to keep up your grades and spend all that time practicing. Testing one, two. Oh, sorry. Forget it, she hates jocks. But on the other hand, I don't. <laughs> Almost doesn't count when you're trying to make the team. I think I know what's wrong. What? For someone your weight, you're coming in at too acute an angle to convert your kinetic energy to potential energy by means of the elasticity of the vaulting device. <laughs> what does that mean? It means plant your pole higher. Gotcha. Okay. That was my best jump yet. Thanks a lot, Nick. Just a simple question of physics. Now all I gotta do is add about four more inches to it, and maybe I got a chance. Boy, competition must be tough. Yeah, and if I don't make the team, I lose my scholarship. Now that's my problem. I'm pretty good at a lot of events, but I'm not great at any one. You don't have a problem. You're going out for the decathlon. The decathlon? I don't think I'm strong enough in a lot of those events. Just leave it to me. I'm going to turn you into the next Bruce Jenner. <laughs> you know, after I'm an astronomer, maybe I should sunlight as a coach. <laughs> you know something, Rumi? You're OK. Well, I'm off to Professor Mills' party. Wish me luck. You got it. Wow, I can't believe it. He's actually going to the house he lives in. Easy, Nick. It's not a national shrine. Maybe not to you. But remember, this is the man whose theory on interstellar dust nearly brought me to tears. Hi, I'm Mark Fullerton. Professor Mills is sitting. I guess you're both new astronomy students. Yes, I'm Debbie Scott. Huh. Corny Scheffner. This, uh, this sure is nice. Professor Mills, he gave a special party for us. He does it every year. It's his way of making up for all the pain he's going to cause you later. <laughs> well, there you go. Hi. You're Hi. Nick Newell, aren't you? Right. Mark Fullerton, Professor Mills' assistant. Nice party. He does it every year. It's his way of making up for all the pain he's going to cause you later. <laughs> Where's Professor Mills? 
Uh, oh, there he is over there. Go on, introduce yourself. I've got to steer the troops back here. Thanks. Anyway, I'm really torn. As much as I love the biosciences, astronomy has so much more to indulge one's sense of, of spatial relationships. And the whole idea of having the vastness of the universe as one's laboratory is a totally seductive notion. It's really leading me down the path of uh, a double major. I get the impression you're looking at me. Nick Newell, sir. And I've been an admirer of yours ever since I read your paper on Alpha Centauri. Not to mention your treatise on Magellanic Clouds. So, you're the celebrated Nick Newell. I particularly appreciated your support of Shipman's theory on evaporating black holes and the red ship controversy. I'm overcome. I fully believe the X-ray galaxies and quasars need a more thorough examination. Well, listen. Why don't we save some of this for the course? Otherwise, I'll be out of a job. Hi. Want one? Thanks. Something wrong? Yeah. I blew it with Professor Mills. He's my idol, and I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for him. Neither would I. He's my father. He is? That's right. My name's Denise, and I know who you are. Yeah, I'm a dummy. But listen, tell me about your father. I think I came on too strong, and I really bugged him. Oh, he always looks like he's bugged, but he's not really. You just have to know how to handle him. Oh, OK, how? He admires persistence. Don't give up. Okay, I won't. Thanks for the tip. That's okay. So I thought I'd take biochemistry my second year. Excuse me, Professor, but I wonder what your latest thought is on the Big Bang Theory. I think fireworks should be outlawed. Excuse me. <laughs> How do you feel about the spiral form of the Milky Way? It's delicious. Well, sir. A school outing or something? No, I'm an astronomy major. Oh, one of those quiz kids. I'm only 13, if you're wondering. I wasn't. Everybody else does. My name's Nick. Joshua Debs. <sighs> something bothering you? Why, does it show? You look like the hound dog who just found out the whole world ran out of trees. i never seen anybody as depressed as you before, finals. You work around here? Right here. I'm supervisor of custodial services. And to put it another way, I'm the head janitor. But that's my problem. What's yours? Professor Mills. Jason? He's no problem. You know him? Know him? I taught him everything he knows. Well, not exactly. But when he was smaller than you, he used to come up here every day after school and hang around and make himself a general nuisance. Don't mean to brag, but... I'm the one responsible for talking him into becoming an astronomer. Really? Yep. He's kind of like a Jackie Robinson, only in the learning world. 
He was the first colored man to become a professor here at Brighton. You mean the first black man? Well, today he's black, but in those days he was just colored. And in my day, they called you a whole lot of other things, and you couldn't even become a student here. That's awful. Yep. What's your problem with Jason? Oh, I blew it at his party. I was real pushing. I just made a total fool out of myself. Is that all? I thought it was something serious. Would you like to see the telescope? Would I? Oh, I can't be late for Mill's class. Well, I'll just give you the 50 cent to it. Okay. What a beauty. She sure is. What is it? About 10 inches? No. Twelve. Photographic F-15 Cassegrain. It's over a hundred power. What about its light gathering power? Eight thousand. Wow. It brings the moon down to about 230 miles. And the rings on Saturn, they look like you could just reach out and slip one over your finger. <laughs> you come back at night, we'll look at the stars together. Thanks. You know, I feel like I'm about to go on the biggest trip of my life. You are. I wish I was your age again. Just to get that feeling of setting out on a voyage for the first time. something, young fella. You look like an astronomer. I do? Thanks! Perhaps not since Galileo's day has there been a more exciting time in the field of astronomy. Our concept of the universe is expanding and shrinking at the same time. The Voyager probe of Saturn and its satellites has demonstrated... <laughs> 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 Thank you for joining us, Mr. Newell. Perhaps your watch runs on Greenwich Mean Time. Sorry, sir. As I was saying, the Voyager probe has given us just a taste of our present ignorance. A year ago, we would have laughed if anyone had told us that VL Lassiter objects were actually active galaxies. Yet today, we know this for a fact. Yesterday, V861 Scorpi and Circinus X2 were quantities unknown. Today, they're new black hole candidates. And our quest is to keep probing the Whoa! very... Mr. Newell, are you a student or a saboteur? <laughs> Sorry, sir. I couldn't quite see you from here. Well, perhaps you'd be more comfortable in the front row. Thank you, sir. <laughs> there we are. You more comfortable? Uh, yes, sir. You like a seat belt? <laughs> no, sir. Uh, this seat is an excellent seat, sir. Good. Now, let's see what you people think you know. This is our galaxy, the Milky Way, the universe. No one questions that statement? Is this the universe? No, sir. Obviously, there are hundreds of galaxies beyond our universe. Hundreds. Worlds upon worlds, slowly unfolding. But let's concentrate on our own galaxy for the moment. The center of which, of course, is the sun. It is the sun. Well, the sun is only peripheral. 
There's a system of globular cluster that really is the center of our galaxy. So now we have another blow to our pride. Not only is the Earth not the center of our galaxy, neither is the sun. We get punier and punier all the time. How puny are we? Surely these other galaxies beyond our own cannot compare in size and luminosity to ours. We don't know. The fact is, new galaxies are being produced all the time. In fact, sometimes whole strings of galaxies are produced. In fact, we really have to consider the concept that our universe is steadily expanding and matter is being created continually. Thus, contractions and re-expansions can take place. Mm. Uh, everywhere. All over the universe. Thank you, Mr. Newell. You worked in everything but the theory of relativity. <laughs> I'm going to cut it short for today so that you can sign up for your labs. But first, I'd like three volunteers to do some work at the observatory where we're going to study the phenomenon of a spiral galaxy. All right. You, you. Me? Miss. Now, if you'll give your names to Mr. Fullerton here, Ladies and gentlemen, that'll be all for today. Boy, for a minute there, I thought I was invisible. I have to lock up. Hey, cheer up. Why wouldn't he let me volunteer for the observatory? Maybe next time. Man, it must really be something, being his assistant. It's great. How did you ever get the job? I got straight A's, did outside assignments, and my uncle is president of the university. No, really, uh, he picks a different assistant each semester. Who knows? Maybe you'll get the job next time. Are you kidding? He won't even let me empty the wastebasket. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> sorry. That's okay. Here you go. Thanks. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> Don't be funny, Jim. Move it for the lady. That's okay. I can go around. No, I wouldn't hear of it. You're a college girl. I wouldn't want to see you walking out in the street. No, 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 wait a minute. My friend thinks I should do the gentlemanly thing, and I think you should let me do it. Will you get out of my way? Oh, you hear that, Les? We got a co-ed with Spunk. Hey, <laughs> I like that. How about lunch? Look, just leave me alone, okay? Oh, I got an extra sandwich. Forget it! Hey. What's going on? Well, who are you, the Lone Ranger? Captain of the boxing team. Be my guest. You OK? I'm fine. Thanks for helping out. Oh, that's my specialty, damsels in distress. Listen, as long as luck threw us together like this, how about going out to dinner with me one night, like, uh, Saturday? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm busy. Well, how about Friday? Also busy. Well, don't tell me you're busy Saturday through Thursday, too. You got it. Listen, should I try another mouthwash or something? Why don't you just try another girl, okay? Hey, look. Just level with me. Donna says you don't like jocks. Okay. To tell you the truth, I just don't like the idea of guys on athletic scholarships beating out other kids who've got higher grades and really want an education. And on top of that, your coaches fix it so you can breeze right through your courses. That's not true. Look, I've got to get to class. Thanks for your help, and if I ever run into a plumber in a dark alley, I'll give you a call. Hey, Nick. 
What are you looking at, Big Dipper? No, I'm looking at Professor Mill's house. What are you trying to do, blackmail? Oh, no, I'm trying to figure out what makes him tick. So far, it's only Pizza Delight. I'll forget about him. These people are getting together downstairs. Come on. I'm no good at parties. I think I'll book in. It's not really a party. It's just some kids from the dorm, you know, Dinah and Julie. Oh. Well, in that case, maybe I uh, will join you for a while. But I don't want to get in the way of people are hitting on each other. Yeah, I understand. It's not that kind of thing. OK. But if you happen to get lucky, remember the red handkerchief. And don't worry about me, because I got my own place to go. You do? Law library stays open till 11. <laughs> <laughs> my mother says when I was about 18 months old, she came into my room and I was looking at this book. You were reading a book when you were 18 months old? No, I was about to chew on it. I was teething. <laughs> Nick, seriously, when did you really first realize that you were a genius? Oh, I never thought of it that way. Stuff just came easy to me. Then I took some tests and they said I was gifted. But I never knew what they really meant. When did you start to do math? One day when I was about four years old. My dad was doing income tax and I was sitting on his lap. I don't believe it. You saw he made a mistake. Yeah, and he gave me the funniest look. I couldn't tell if he was surprised I figured it out or if I called him cheating. <laughs> Nick, you're too much. I always thought I wasn't enough. <laughs> hey, how about going to Rossetti's and getting a few brews? Good idea. You want to come along? To a beer bar? that asked me for my ID if I buy rum candy. Well, what are you going to do? I should really hit the books. Okay. See ya. Okay. You're going to miss them. I could drink beer any time. Actually, I don't even like beer. I'd much rather talk to you. You would? Nick, you're fascinating. You know, you're head and shoulders above those other guys. Oh, look, I'm going to run upstairs and change into something more comfortable, and we'll talk, OK? OK. I'll be right back. This creative writing class is nothing new at Brighton. What is new is that it's compulsory. So suddenly I have a very popular class. <laughs> <laughs> at any rate, welcome both upperclassmen and freshmen. Now to get an idea of where we are, what your background is, the great American novel. Anyone? Yes? Moby Dick. Written by? Uh, what's his name? Well, that's the question, not the answer. <laughs> Anyone? Yes. Herman Melville, 1819-1891. And another great book of the sea. The Old Man in the Sea. And what was the name of the old man? Uh, well, in the movie, he was played by Humphrey Bogart. I, uh, I don't think he had a name in the novel. Yes. It wasn't a novel, it was a novella. His name was Santiago, and it was Spencer Tracy, not Humphrey Bogart. Thank you, young man. Uh, I'm a great moviegoer myself, but what we're trying to deal with here is the written work. The problem is that too many of us can't express in writing just what it is that we have in mind. So now you will write about anything, your life, your fantasies. Well, not all your fantasies. <laughs> First, tell me who you are. That way, I'll get to know you and to discover if you can write. And if you can't, we'll try to do something about it. Well, now let's look at our reading assignments. Smart kid. He thinks he put me away. He did. The primeval fireball prediction was verified by the radio astronomers <coughs> who discovered the microwave background. This discredited the steady state theory of cosmology widely accepted in the 50s.
By and large, I was pleased with your reports. Normally, I don't grade the first report of the semester, but as you can see, in this case, I've made an exception. Oh. I've given only one A. Let him rejoice. <laughs> I've given one D. Let him beware. <laughs> Please, study my comments. Ladies and gentlemen, that'll be all for today. with him? Yeah. He gave me a crummy C. I know it was worth more than that. Listen, maybe you just got off on the wrong foot. Do you want me to talk to him? Would you? Maybe you can find out what buzzed him about me. I hope it's not my personality. It's the only one I got. I'll talk to him right after dinner when he's in a good mood. <laughs> I'd love to say that. See ya. Thanks, Rose. You're welcome. Hmm. You're not Rose. I thought I'd bring you your coffee tonight. That means you're either going to hit me up for money or clothes or both. No, I just want to talk to you for a second. That can be arranged. It's about your new student, Nick Newell. He thinks you're being real hard on him. Just what makes him think that. He says you gave him a C when he deserved more. I happen to think he got what he deserved. Besides, what's this sudden interest in Nick Newell? Well, I think he's a real hunk, don't you? Well, I'm not a good judge of hunks. And he's so smart. I don't think it's very smart of him asking you to plead his case for him. He didn't ask. I said I would. You can tell him that he's not a special case and that he's going to be treated just like every other student. Daddy, do you really think you're being fair to him? Of course I am. Now, you're going to have to get out of here and let me get some work done, okay? Okay. By the way, I could use a couple of new sweaters. <laughs> we'll talk about it. I thought it was in training. In your eyes. Well, I figured it was the honorable thing to do. Yeah, I thought that was your girlfriend coming out, and I figured she'd want to remain anonymous. Well, she doesn't care about anonymous. She's still in there. Then what are you doing out here? Taking a break. Oh. Well, I'll be downstairs. How long do you think it'll be? I don't know. It doesn't seem to be up to me. Well, uh, Steve, <laughs> I wish I could help you, but good luck. Tied up. You mean he's entertaining? Something like that. Typical. As long as Mr. Macho's having fun, what does he care about you? Julie, he's not like that. Steve's a super outgoing guy. Anyway, I have to finish my work. Why don't you come up to my room and study? 
Ah, that's okay. I'm fine. Oh, come on. Hey, you can save me from pigging out. My mother just sent me some homemade chocolate chip cookies. Chocolate chip? I think you just said the magic word. <laughs> Where's Dinah? Oh, she has a date. Her, too? You don't think Steve and oh. Dinah are... <laughs> no, I saw her date. Well, at least I saw most of him. He's a basketball player, and the doorway was blocking his head. <laughs> Did you say something about chocolate chip cookies? Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to know that men have killed for these. Mmm. Thanks. Mmm. I can see why. Crisp, but not... Flaky, a bittersweet taste, and a nut-like aroma. My compliments to your mother. This may be her finest hour. I gotta hit the books. I've got a biology test tomorrow. Hmm, on what? Human sexuality. Hey, if you need any help, just yell. That's my specialty. I thought it was astronomy. That's my major. I really know a lot about uh, human sexuality. <laughs> You do? Oh, it fascinates me. Just think of the human body and that intricate system of organs and glands all in here. And they're all waiting for that moment when they're asked to do their thing. Good cookie. Thanks. Look at this. Aren't those organs amazing? Yeah, they really are. Think of all those muscles, veins, and nerve endings. Each one of them knows exactly what it has to do. I never thought of it that way. Oh, it's not just the mechanics that interest me. The whole idea of... Uh, uh, it's interesting, <laughs> don't you think? Delicious. You sound like a real expert. Oh. Don't get me wrong. I never personally, you know. I know. But I plan to, of course. Of course. How about you? Me? Well, I plan to, too. <laughs> At least that's one of my plans. I guess I'm kind of old fashioned. Me, too. What gets me is trying to picture uh, certain people actually, you know. I know. You mean like your parents? <laughs> right. Or the teachers, or the minister, or Carl Sagan. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I really do have to study. <laughs> me too. Julie? Yes, Nick? Uh, can I have some cookies to take back to my room? <laughs> Be my guest. See it die down. It makes all the difference. Good throw, Bensfield. You're doing a lot better. Yeah, well, my friend here has been coaching me. I mean, uh, he's been helping me out. Moral support, stuff like that. Actually, I just carry his equipment bag. Yeah, yeah. Well, whatever it is, uh, there's been a big improvement. You know, you got a chance to be a decathlon athlete while you're a freshman. So I want you out here training an extra hour every day in the field events. Oh, that's great, Coach, but when do I study? Bensfield, you are here on an athletic scholarship. Do I have to remind you of that? No, sir. Well, just remember, 
we give it scholarships, we also take it from away. And you keep at it till it gets dark. Boy, he's tough. Listen, are you behind on anything? Creative writing, an autobiography for Conklin. I did a rough draft and it was terrible. Would you mind if I, uh, kind of help you put it together? Oh, Nick, that'd be great. Thanks. Who are the roomies for? I don't want to get a bad grade and give Julie the satisfaction. Oh, uh, about Julie. I tried to put in a good pitch for you, but uh, she doesn't go for jocks. I know. So you mind if I move in? Huh? <laughs> I think she really goes for me. Maybe she doesn't want to, but... Uh, she can't help herself. Oh, hi, Mr. Dale. Hello there, Nick. You look nice. Thank you. I'm going to class. Class? Yeah. I ordered a few courses. Never too late, you know. <laughs> That's great. So how are things with Mills? Not good. I don't think he likes me. He hardly calls on me in class. And he won't let me volunteer for outside projects. You show no mercy. I know. Beating my professor takes guts. Somebody's got to do it. Debs asked me to talk to you about Nick Newell. Oh, no, don't tell me he's a Nick Newell groupie, too. Apparently he is. Very much so. He told him that he can't get to first base with you. I treat Mr. Newell exactly as I do everyone else. He doesn't think so. I'm sure you've got a reason for doing whatever you're doing. Or not doing. Look, I know a lot about kids like Nick Newell. They breeze through school with practically no effort, and everybody treats them like superstars. They start to believe their own publicity, that they can do anything that everybody loves them and admires them, and that they have almost magical powers. Well, here's one teacher who isn't going to treat him like that. All he wants you to do is give him an outside assignment. Check. I resign. That's the game. And Mr. Newell? I'll give him an outside assignment. Well, I feel sorry for him if he doesn't deliver. He's not ready for failure. <laughs> you know, Ingmar Bergman is brilliant. He understands women so well. And the photography, and the way he uses light, and the texture of his images. I agree. Of course he's an old Woody Allen. What do you think, Dinah? I think he's given new meaning to the word gloom. <laughs> but the popcorn had real butter. Oh, yes. The popcorn was brilliant. Where's Steve? Studying. Steve studying? Mm -hmm. Sounds like a contradiction in terms. Aren't you being a little hard on him? How's it going with Mills, Nick? It isn't. I'm ready to give up. Maybe you ought to have it out with him. I mean, drawn telescopes at 10 paces? You know what I mean. Confront him. Just ask him point blank why I never let you volunteer. Shoot! That's a great idea. I'll do it. You're terrific. Be right back. Where are you going? One popcorn with real butter for the road. Well? Well what? I think you have his little heart turning backflips. Come on, Donna, that's just boyish affection. Looked more like drooling to me. Look, I'm the expert. Remember, I'm majoring in men? Donna, don't be ridiculous. Nick's like a little brother. Maybe, but he sure doesn't look at you like a big sister. Excuse me, uh, Professor Mills? Yes, Newell? Well, 
have given us a lot of thought, and I don't want to seem important, but why are you persecuting me? I mean, everybody else gets a volunteer for assignment. Ew. Everybody else gets called on in class. What's wrong with me? Maybe you're prejudiced. Maybe you can't relate to short people. No, well, will you? Please, sir, let me finish. If his cousin spilled your hors d'oeuvres, I'll pay for them. If it's something personal, I'd like to hear what it is because every man is entitled to face his accuser. And every man is presumed innocent until proven guilty. Are you finished? Yes, sir. Now, what I was trying to say was, I intend to give you an outside assignment. You do? That's great! Why didn't you say so? Well, I'm going to tell you after class. Come back then and we'll discuss it. Oh, I will, sir. And thank you, sir. Oh, and all that stuff I just said, forget it. Good idea. Mills finally gave me extra work. Hey, Nick, that's great. It's what you've been waiting for. You want some lunch? I'm too excited. Man, this is going to be the best report I've ever done. It's going to be perfect. I'm going to spend every minute on it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh what? You. What does your paper do? Um, uh, Friday. Oh, nuts. That's what my project is doing. How am I going to help you? Look, it's OK. I'll muddle through. No, I don't want you to muddle. I'll think of something. Just let me handle it. Okay. Nick, yeah. want some fries? No, no, thank you. Well, okay. Listen, Bensfield, don't forget about the rush party Friday night. Don't worry, I won't. We'd like you to come too, Noel. Oh, you don't have to be polite just because I'm sitting here. Now, that's not it. You know, we're really considering you for the fraternity. You are? Yeah, you're unique. One of a kind. And you also happen to be a pretty good guy. Gee, thanks, Langford. Hey, you want to come watch all? He just scored 60,000. Oh, I might do better next time. Better? You're kidding. That's the best score for any of us. It's incredible. I scored 90,000 the first time I played it. Really? <laughs> hey, all. Newell scored 90,000 on that machine. On that machine? No way. I really did. Oh, well, if you really did, why don't you really do it again? I'm sure we'd all really like to see that, wouldn't we? <laughs> really? No, I'm not in the mood. Oh, not in the mood. Did you hear that? He's not in the mood. He only plays this machine when he's inspired. Right, Newell? <laughs> Come on now, little one. Did you really make that score, or are you just pulling our legs? You're saying I didn't? I'm saying you might be stretching the truth a little. Are you really serious about rushing that little smart out? Sure am. So are the rest of the fellas. 
All it takes is one black ball, you know. That's all it takes for your kid brother, too. So, I guess you're wondering why I invited you here. Oh, yeah. Why did you? Well, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I got something pretty heavy to tell you. And I wouldn't blame you if you said no. See, it has to do with somebody I really like a lot. Somebody who I'll do anything for. Who? Steve. Steve? You mean Big Steve, your roommate? Yeah. Nick, why are we in this room talking about Steve? I mean, what if he walked in on us? Oh, don't worry. I fixed it so he won't. Anyway, I promised to help him with his autobiography for creative writing class. But now I've got this big major project from Professor Mills, and I won't be able to, and I thought maybe you could... Oh, no. You want me to help Steve? You're so good with writing. You could help him open up. He's covered his entire life in one compound sentence. Well, maybe that's all it's worth. Please, Julie, come on. You got Steve all wrong. He's really a terrific guy, and I'm really stuck. All right, but I'm only doing this as a favor to you. Thanks, Julie. You won't be sorry. I already am. Hi, Steve. Hey, Julie. Conklin flips when she sees my paper. I really appreciate you getting Julie to help me out the way you did. No problem. She's a fantastic girl. She sure is. Steve, are you falling for her? Well, it's kind of hard not to. Look, I tried to tell her how great you are and everything, but she really doesn't seem to be interested. What I mean is, I don't want to see you get hurt. Nick, I hear you talking. My heart isn't paying any attention. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Hey, Julie. you finished it. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Now it's time to take it over to the big man himself. Well, I hate to be a killjoy, but this thing is huge. How are we going to get it out of here? Elementary, my dear Steve. Would you wheel it over to the door for me, please? Sure. Thank you. Be careful with it. Ah, 
The mad scientist strikes again. Where'd you get this? Borrowed it from med school. Don't worry, the cadaver didn't say a thing. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Need any help, Nick? Nope, just take it down the freight elevator. Okay, I'm off. Good luck. Thanks. I'll need it. <laughs> He's something else, isn't he? Unbelievable. You know, you gave him a real good grade. How about me? Steve, it's 200% better than it was before. Really? You really opened up and expressed your feelings. This part where you say how you felt when your parents first told you you were adopted, it's really beautiful. Well, it kind of hurt to write that. That's why it's good. Anything else? Just a couple of minor things. Do you have time? Oh, lady, do I have time? Okay. I had a couple of thoughts about your closing paragraph. The menu? It won't be necessary. See? Dough burger, large fries, two milks. Cheeseburger rare, side of onion rings, and a large root beer. Thank you. You should have seen the expression on Mill's face when I wheeled my model into his office. He was really impressed. That was great. Oh, excuse me. Gotta say hello to a friend. Hi, Denise. Oh, hi, Nick. What are you doing here alone? It's Rosie's night off, so I'm just picking up a to-go order for me and Daddy. She's busy grading reports. He is? Well, you better hurry up and get that order home. It's not good to grade reports on an empty stomach. There you are. Thanks. May I ask where you ordered? Sure. A rare cheeseburger, a side of onion rings, and what's A large root beer. Nope, a diet cola. Diet cola? That's awful. He doesn't know what he's missing. The way the root beer goes down with the onion rings. Order one for him. Please. I'll pay for it. But he hates root beer. Oh, no. Well, let me pay for that. I can't let you do that. I'd be honored to pick up his tab. Are you trying to bribe him with the cheeseburger? No. I don't even want him to know I paid. Just tell him he has a mysterious benefactor. Please, do. Well, I don't know. Will one of you please pay? I have an order waiting in the kitchen. That'll be five eighty-nine. Here, keep the change. Thanks. Gee, thanks, Nick. My pleasure. Sorry about the root beer. Can't win them all. He's probably grading at this very minute. Yeah, forget it. You're gonna have a nervous breakdown. You're right. I mean, why should I be worried? I did a great job, and he's gonna love it. Maybe I should have let him know I paid for his cheeseburger. And thus we have seen that there are three main classes of galaxies, the spiral, the elliptical, and the irregular. And we have also seen, it is my hope, that when these galaxies interact on each other, the results are the known variables. The unknowns will be discovered by us and the astronomers who follow us as we attempt to plug the black hole of ignorance with knowledge. And that concludes Mr. Newell's report. Are there any comments? Mr. Shatner. Well, I thought his model was terrific and the report was kind of interesting, but I wish he'd said something about the ring galaxies, which he included in the irregular category. Mr. Evans? I agree with Bernie. The ring galaxies have an incredibly violent genesis, and I find that the emission of that kind of phenomena kind of, uh, well, sloppy. No offense. <laughs> Mr. Henry. Well, it, it seems to me that any paper on galactic collisions must include some mention of the cosmic oddities that are caused by the encounters. What he said was beautifully illustrated. I just don't think he went far enough. Or to put it another way, more matter and less art. The whole is the sum of the parts. 
and your parts, although very decorative, were insufficient. Would you agree, Mr. Newell? I don't know. Well, I think you should have an opinion. After all, you built a model here that could be used as special effects for a Star Wars movie. <laughs> And finally, I promise that campus politics will be eradicated when I take office. Those who turn everything into petty, narrow political issues are thinking like children. And speaking of children, there is Brighton's boy genius, who I know will cast his vote for me, if he can reach the lever. <laughs> Hey, where's the fire? Excuse me, I have to go. What's going on here? What happened? I wish I wasn't so smart. I wish I was stupid. I'm too old for kids my own age and too young for everybody else. I don't belong here. I don't know where I belong. This is the best day of my life. Here, now let me hold this for you. First of all, it's official. I made the track team. The decathlon, I'm going to keep my scholarship. That's great. And you know my autobiography? I got an A- minus from Conklin. Isn't that great? Great. And the best news of all is about Julie. She really likes me. Great. Nick. I owe it all to you. You're the one that got her to help me. I would have never even gotten close to her without you. I know. Hey, good one. You really moved me. Nick, how'd Mills like your project? He couldn't stop talking about it. <laughs> good. Nick, I gotta get to practice. I just wanted to thank you. You're the greatest. Yeah, Nick, you're the greatest. Excuse me. Hi, Dinah. Hi, Nick. I'm watching a basketball game. Who's winning? Who cares? I have a thing for men's legs. Where's Julie? I gotta talk to her. I think she's in her room. Thanks. Oh! So gorgeous when he slam dunks. She said, she said that she thought that I was gonna have a barbell in her brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you said he was a great guy, Nick. As usual, you were right.
What are you doing? I'm making a phone call. Later, man. Did you forget about the rush party? It's going on right now. Come on. We all want you to come. I don't know, Langford. I asked everybody. I even called the fraternity house. Nobody has seen him. I hope he's all right. Where can he be? Look, he's going to show up sooner or later. Why don't you two go on to bed, and I'll just wait up for him. OK, but wake us up when he comes home. He looks so shook up. I just hope he hasn't done anything stupid. Nice. It's a great place to live. Come on, meet some of the guys. Uh, I think I'll just have a shot of chip and dip first. Help yourself. Excuse me, got a cake. Well, well, well. What have we here? If it isn't our pint-sized Einstein. His IQ is bigger than everybody's in this room put together. Hey, everybody, get over here. I want you to meet a good friend of mine. This is Mr. Nick Newell. He's going to be a big brother. He's going to be our token shrimp. Come on, all. No, I'm totally serious. First, he's going to be our brother. And then we're going to rush the gang from Sesame Street. <laughs> Knock it off. I know what we'll do with him. He'll be our mascot. He'll be our good luck piece. And do you know where we're going to put him? Right on the bookcase with the rest of the trophies. Put him down. Come on, Langford. We're just having some fun. Put him down, Alter. You'll be spitting your teeth out. Everybody was criticizing his project. Did you too, Daddy? Denise, he has to learn how to take criticism. What's it got to do with you? Well, Mr. Debs called a little while ago and told me to give you this message. Talk to Nick Newell and make him understand what you want from him. If you know yourself. If you don't, you're going to lose him. All right. I'll talk to him first thing in the morning. Good night, Daddy. Good night.
Where's Steve, Julie? what is it? Well, Nick, he's gone. What do you mean, gone? He didn't sleep in his bed last night. A lot of his stuff is gone. He's gone. Well, where'd he go? I don't know. Home, I guess. Because he found the two of you in a clinch? No, it's more than that. I talked to someone in his astronomy class last night. His big project struck out. Oh, no, poor kid. I'm going to call the train stations and the bus stations, see what's leaving or what's left. OK, we'll meet you downstairs in five minutes. It's kind of hurry up. We're going to need your car. I'm hurrying. Got a chisel? Steve! I checked the schedules. No bus or train left here after midnight last night, so we couldn't have caught anything then. Well, what about this morning? Well, the first thing out is an 840 bus to Springdale, so that's a chance, unless you hitchhike. Where is Dinah? I just hope nothing's happened to Nick. Excuse me. Are you talking about Nick Newell? I'm Professor Mills. Yes, I recognize you from your picture on Nick's wall. Oh, really? Well, I was just stopping by to have a chat with him. Is there anything wrong? Well, Professor, Nick's kind of missing. Missing? Yeah, Nick had a real rough day yesterday. Yes, I know. I'm afraid he had his first run-in with failure. Oh, you don't know the half of it. See, Nick saw me and Steve together, and he got hurt because... He has a crush on you. How did you know? Just a lucky guess. Hey, Bensfield, where's your roommate? That's so loud, Winston. I got someone here who wants to apologize to him. Well, he's disappeared. We're going to go and try and find him. Where's Dinah? We'll never make the bus station. Uh, come on, hop in. We'll take you. Right, Oak? Well, whatever you say, Professor. Oh, wait a minute. When you find Nick, please bring him back to my office. I want to have a chat with him. Well, look, Professor Mills, even if we do find Nick, I'm not sure we can talk him into coming back, but I know if you were there. I'll come. Great. Langford, drive carefully. We got back with you, boy. Hey, wait for me. Come on, Dinah, hurry up. Hurry, Dinah. Go, Langford. Go, no, go, no, go. No. <laughs> going to spring deal come in yet? Not yet, but it'll be here. Always is. Still leaving at 8.40? Still leaving at 8.40. Promise you. Thank you. even more than me. Yeah, you're about as funny as a plague. <laughs> Can't you get any more speed out of this thing, Langford? Take it out of first gear. Please, please, my head, not so loud. Hey, Sonny, your bus just pulled in. You can get on now if you like. Thanks, mister. You want to finish my game? Are you kidding? You can't walk and chew gum at the same time. <laughs> Seen a young boy in here, about this high my complexion? Yeah, he just got on the bus. I need to talk to him for a minute. Is it okay? Sure, go ahead. Thank you. Be right back.
Thank you very much. He's not on that bus. Well, maybe he saw us. Well, he's got to be around here someplace. Excuse me, you're talking about that young kid that was just here? Yes, you know where we can find him. He's got to be on the bus. Oh, this here's the new missus. My pride and joy. <laughs> hey, wait, wait for me! Hey, hey, open the door! Yeah, well, it's we only been married 24 hours, but we made everyone count, if you catch my drift. <laughs> oh, there he is. Searching on the side. Okay, I'll tell you the truth. I'm a runaway. Now that makes sense. And those people who are chasing me, well, one of them's my father. Well, the rules say I'm not supposed to stop, but I guess I should give you back to your father. Well, maybe. See, he used to get drunk and beat me. But I think he's reformed, but I have to talk to him to find out. So can you wait for me? I'll be just a minute. I don't think I do that. It's against the rules. Come on, give the kid a break. Where's your heart? Yeah. All right, all right. Oh, he finally listened. He's come to his senses. Oh, see, he's getting off. Come on, Jim. Okay, and hurry it up. Don't be mad. You're very special to me, and I do love you. I know, like a little brother. Well, you've got to admit, there is kind of an age difference. Only five years. When I'm 60, you'll be 65. What's the big deal? should have been more tuned in, Nick. I didn't mean to hurt you. It's okay.
I may be a good scientist, but I'm going to have to brush up on my psychology. I was just trying to spare you some of the pain that I had. You see, Nick, I used to be a wunderkind, too. Had a high IQ just like you. Everybody treated me special, so I thought I was. And it took me a long time to figure out how to deal with that. In the meantime, it cost me a lot. Some of my friends, even my wife. I was trying to save you all that. Trying to rub your nose in reality while you're still young. But I realize I can't do that. You're gonna have to figure it out for yourself. like a uh, nice party. Professor Mills gives them every year. It's his way of making up for all the pain he's gonna cause you later. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. You're welcome. 